In this video, we will be connecting the Basis 3 FPGA board to the MSP430 microcontroller through its P mode port. We will be configuring the Basis 3 in Vivado Design Suite as a 4 bit adder, and after connecting to the microcontroller via its P mode pins, you will be sending 4 bit numbers from the MSP430, which will be added and displayed on the Basis 3's LEDs. Now that we are in Vivado, let's open our previous 4 bit full adder project. I'll jump directly to the constraints file. If you'd like to check how the 4-bit adder design file was created, please take a look at the full adder basis 3 video. Here in the basis 3 constraints XTC file, we were using the slide switches as inputs and LEDs as outputs, which were giving the result of the addition operation in four LEDs, 0 to 3, and the carry output at LED 5. Remember that we were leaving the LED 4 as blank. We are going to keep the same settings for the output. However, instead of using slide switches, we are going to use the PMOD JA as our input port so that we'll be able to connect our microcontroller. Now let's open the reference manual for the basis tree and go directly to the PMOD section. We are now on the page 18 of our reference manual and you can see the PMOD ports on the basis tree. This one is the JA PMOD. This one is the JX ADC PMOD which has an analog to digital conversion property, but can also be configured as digital IO. This one is the JB P mode, and this one is the JC P mode. So on our board, this one is JA, JB, JC, and this one is JX ADC. Now let's go to page 17 to see the pins of the P mode port. This is the front view of the P mode port. And if we take a look at our board to our JAP mode, which is this one, you can directly match it with our PDF file. So these ones on the left, these ones are 3.3 volts. Next to them, we have the ground. And we have eight pins, which can be configured as digital I.O. On the right, we have pin one. And this one is pin 6. Below we have pin 7. The same applies for the JX ADC as well. And if we also look at the other side of the board, the same mapping is for the JB and JC as well. For making a connection to our microcontroller, we are going to use the JA port and we will be using four pins for our first number and the last four pins for the second number. And I'm going to use this male to male pin headers to connect to the P mode. And then I'm going to use female to female jumper cables to connect to our microcontroller. Now we are back in Vivado and we are going to change our constraints file. First, I'm going to disable this XDC file and I'm going to create a new one. Add sources, add or create constraints, next, create file. I'm going to name it MSP430, which is the microcontroller that we are going to connect. Basis 3, adder. And I'm going to click on finish. Now let's double click on this one. So first I'm going to copy and paste the output sections which were going to stay the same. Remember that we were supposed to use the same LED. So I'm going to copy this section. I'm going to paste it here. Since we are going to use eight pins in the P mode, we can get the carry input from the slide switch once again. So let's copy this section as well. And let's paste it here. And we are going to change this section with the P mode port. Let's open our master XDC file, go to JA, which is the one that we are going to use. Let's copy this section and paste it in our new file. 
However, we need to change it according to our input and we can copy them from our previous file as well. We can get A0 and change it with JA0. This is going to be A1, A1, A2, A2, A3, A3. But we will not continue because the rest four pins are going to be B, as far as I can recall, yes. So we are going to change them with B0, B1, B2, and B3. So this one is going to be B0, this one is going to be B1, B2, And B3. And of course, let's uncomment these sections. Okay, let's check once again. These are our outputs. So, sum in four digits and carry out in one digit. This is our carry input with the slide switch. And these are our inputs. First 4-bit number is in P mode JA from pins 1 to pin 4. And the next number is from pin 7 to pin 10. So let's click on Run Synthesis. It's running Synthesis Design. And let's run Implementation. Let's click on cancel and let's connect our basis 3 board. Let's click on generate bitstream. It says running right bitstream. Let's open hardware manager. Let's click on open target, auto connect. And let's click on program device and let's choose our device. Click program. Now that our basis 3 board has been programmed, we can connect our microcontroller to it. Okay, now we are going to connect our basis 3 board with the MSP430 microcontroller. Before connecting, you can see that even though we don't have any connections to our PMOD board, we can see our result as 1110 which stands for 14 and we have a carry as well so it seems that our pmod ports are set to high as default but now we are going to see what will happen after we connect them to the microcontroller we also need to have a common ground so i took the ground pin from the microcontroller and i'm going to connect it to one of the ground pins on the pmod port for example this one Okay, now that we have a common ground and these four jumper cables are coming from the P2.0 to P2.3 ports. So I'm going to connect them to the P mode port as well. So I'm going to start from 2.0. Actually, it's better that I start from P2.3. Okay, now I've connected the bottom four pins. Now I'm going to be connecting starting from P1.0 to P1.3. So let's start with P1.3, which is this one. 
and this is P1.2. And this is P1.1. And this one is P1.0. So let's try to set them all to zero. I had already written this simple program, which makes the P1 out as all zeros and P2 out as all zeros. I had debugged it. Let's resume that. Okay, perfect. As soon as I resumed, you can see that we have all zeros on the LED. So we are adding zero plus zero and the result is zero for sure. By the way, remember that we had still use this carry bit from this last slide switch so if i slide that we are going to get one which is going to be added to the sum so now let's try to change these values and let's see if our basis tree is adding these numbers so let's change p1 out to for example six and let's have eight for p2 out it's going to take some time to debug and send it to the microcontroller again, but let's check it. So let's resume it. it. We can see the addition result here. So this is 14, 8 plus 6. So if we again slide the switch, we will have 15 as we have carry input as 1. But let's leave it as zero again. So now let's try another example. In this one, we are going to change the value of P1 out by shifting one bit towards the left three times. And we are going to have a one second of delay in between these operations. So let's debug this. And let's click on resume. We know that in our code, P2 out is always equal to 8. However, P1 out is changing. And P1 is starting with the value of 1. And that 1 bit is being shifted to the left by 1. So that makes it 2. And it's shifted once again. So it's making it 4. So we are adding 1 to 8 first, which makes 9, which we see right now. Then we add 8 with 2, and then we add 8 with 4. So we can see the results here. We can change the code. So let's increase this to 4. So it's going to be shifted three times. Let's debug it. And let's click on resume. As you can see, it started with 9 on the last step. We have a carry output, which is equal to 1. So that makes 16 because we are adding 8 plus 8. Our P2 out is already equal to 8. And when we shift 1 to the left three times, we have an 8 as well. So 8 plus 8 is 16. And we are getting a carry and the sum is 0. So in this video, we made a connection between the basis tree and the MSP430 microcontroller. And we used the basis tree as a 4-bit adder which gets the inputs from the microcontroller and displays the results on its LED array.